discussion time. Come on, grab your mics. We'll talk about some random crap. Power stars and the skeletal minion. Long never end discussion time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Ethan's phone crapped out because. Of no, 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 no. Let's out. just let's just go again. Go again. What do I say? We're talking about. Oh yeah, we're talking about seniors violently whoa, 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 fucking whoa, during an orchestra concert. What? Oh shit! I think I deleted the last one. No! So let's redo it. Violently, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Did you earwax? Violent fucking you! No! That's how we're starting the podcast now. <laughs> Are you sure you deleted it? I'm positive. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> fucking violently. Fucking. Ah! <laughs> you like it there? <laughs> Whoa! In the nostril! <laughs> in the nostril? Earwax! Yeah, why wouldn't it be in the ear? I thought that was. Earwax in the nostril! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No, nose explosion hole! <laughs> Why is there your ex in your nostril? Shut up! <laughs> Saliva in your eyeball hole! That actually makes a little more sense. I suck at cum stain! Whew. Welcome to discussion time. Welcome to discussion time. <laughs> We yeah, are, um, what happened was, um... Well, a couple things happened. One, my laptop's not charging, so... Yeah, we, we're using Ethan's phone. Two, we started recording with his phone. Two, it stopped and he accidentally... <laughs> you just said two twice. Two, two. two yeah, two, two, you, two, were, two, you two. were like, two, we were good with his phone. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Gabe Noah, I can't count to three. Yeah. So just go to four. Christ. Wouldn't that be okay? Can I level with you? If Gabe, if Gabe announced Half Life Four, that would be amazing. I, I had this discussion on another podcast I was on. Um, it was like essentially because we um we recorded something and referred to it as Episode Four when it was actually Episode Three, and so we s- decided that like Episode we had a discussion about like if they just made Half Life Four. Yeah. And essentially, it was like um Half Life. Three contains like super integral plot events to understand Half Life Four, but they only ever like vaguely refer to them in the fourth. And it's... since you didn't get the third game, you don't understand. Oh four. yeah! Like remember that thing that happened here like a yeah. year ago? Let's never talk about that again. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't want it to happen again, Gordon. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like what happened again? Yeah, Gordon. Like Gordon can't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Like Half Life Three didn't happen, and they're like. What the fuck is Half-Life No, 3? no, Gordon, Gordon doesn't talk, which is even better. <laughs> yeah, Gordon, Gordon just, like, shrugs his shoulders, like, you wouldn't want it to happen again, would you? <laughs> no, just you don't. Just shrugs, huh? You don't even say anything in response, it's just... Yeah. And then it's like, Gordon! He just starts yelling then, at Then, it. like, a whole, like, a whole new character is introduced. <laughs> yeah. And- but it's not introduced in that game. No, introduced- he's introduced in Half-Life 3 and exactly. dies at the very beginning of Half-Life 4 and they're constantly talking about how great he was. Yeah, exactly. It's like... He okay. becomes the new main character of the yeah. series. Like, there's no for- focus yeah. upon Gordon. Half-Life 4 doesn't even have Gordon Freeman because the, the no, you're big... playing as Gordon The Fre- big plot twist to Half-Life 3 is that Gordon Freeman dies. No, no, no. It has to be, like, in Half-Life 3... Gordon Freeman retires at the end. So it's like retires. it's like Metal Gear Solid. He just retires. <laughs> and then in the fourth Wait, if this is like Metal Gear Solid, that would mean they like made a clone of like Gordon Freeman. And, yes! And now Gordon Freeman's like the main villain and the clone of Gordon Freeman is um Wait, I was going to suggest Half Life 4 is literally just Gordon hanging out in a retirement home, but if he's the villain <laughs> He, like, brews <laughs> evil coffee and makes evil toast. <laughs> what? He brews evil coffee. I was gonna say he was just hanging out in a retirement home, like, it's essentially Gordon Freeman breakfast simulator, but since he's evil, he has to make fucking evil coffee. <laughs> fucking 
evil. <laughs> That's the brand name. He opens, like, the equivalent of Starbucks, except it's called fucking evil coffee. <laughs> fucking. It has to be fucking, though. And everyone's like, Gordon has, like, placed shit in the coffee to take over everyone's minds, and actually he didn't. He just has evil. He's just shit. evil and wanted to make coffee for people. Yeah, he's just like, come on, man. Yeah, and then they go in and they, like, fucking shoot him in the head and the game ends with him dying. Yeah, you you get, like, ten, you get, like, five minutes of gameplay. <laughs> you like... get fucking a ten minute prologue and then one minute of actual gameplay. Like, the prologue shows him coming up with the idea for fucking evil coffee. And, and explaining that he's retired. And then, awesome. like, you jump and then in. And then you, and then you, you like, jump in, and he's, like, at the first evil coffee, and he just serves the first customer, and then someone breaks in and kills him, and it's over. No, no, no. Like, you are a member of the SWAT team. And no, no, you, no. Like, you have to be playing as Gordon. Yeah, team. no, wait. That's that's too much fun. Good point. You are you are the person that you he make... gives... You are the person that he gives the coffee to. He's like, here's your coffee, sir. And you press, like, E... And no, you, like, you can't, like, you can't get to give him the coffee because that would be too much fun because you could spill it all over the motherfucker. Uh, true. And then they'd have valid reason for being upset with you. Well, no, so but it has you, to press, be like, you, like, you, like, press E and it's, like, a pre-animated scene where you just, like, take the coffee. Oh, so it's, like, an FMV. Yeah. But what if you don't push E? Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> you monster. No, if you don't push E, you get the bad ending. Where Gordon Freeman is able to actually have his coffee business and be no, successful. No, he like no, he just like with no malicious intent. That's the bad ending. No, no, no. The good ending is he dies. No, I for want no it. Reason. I want it to just be like nothing happens. He's like, here's your coffee, sir. And then it waits like five minutes. It's like, sir, can you take your coffee? And it just <laughs> keeps going like, sir, I have your coffee ready. No, no, pushing E because it would be like. Pushing E would be giving the dude his coffee, so you just wouldn't give the dude his coffee. Like, it's it's on, like, the back counter, and you have to get it and place it on the front counter. And, and he doesn't do that if you don't push E. And the guy's like, fuck, man, I just want coffee. Yeah. Like, and then the guy, like, slowly goes ballistic. Like, he starts off, uh, can I please have my coffee? And by the end, he's, like, dancing shirtless on a table, and he's like, <laughs> play the dip dip song! <laughs> Dancing. Plot twist, it's fucking Matt Sharp. While violently fucking someone's earwax out. <laughs> earwax America. Earwax America. Earwax America. Oh my god. Matt Sharp. Oh god. If he had a solo career, that's the let's, first uh, thing I hear from him. It was fucking Earwax America. And let's, it's about fucking someone in the nostril and getting earwax out. Let's let's get into let's get into the shirt section of our podcast where we discuss our lives and our philosophies. Okay, well before Ethan so rudely accidentally deleted the first bit. Thank you. Um we were talking about how we had like choir and orchestra concerts recently. Thank you. I'm in choir, Ethan's in orchestra. Uh so is our drummer. Drummer's in yeah, um, but the reason the whole earwax thing came about is because Ethan was, um, no, we were talking about his phone, never mind, that's not the earwax thing. We were talking about fucking because, um... No, no, the earwax thing was beforehand. There, there yeah, was, the earwax thing was separate. It was just completely separate. random. The earwax thing was separate, but the fucking, that part came from we were talking about the orchestra concert, and <laughs> Ethan, <laughs> Ethan mentioned that at the end they all had the seniors come up and, like, do something, and I asked if there's a slideshow, and he said no. So I was like, and he said they're officially adults, and I'm like, oh, so did they just fucking fuck on stage? They violently, violently fuck. Violently. Like, every, it's it's advertised specifically as a child-friendly concert, and then at the end, yeah. so all just fuck violently. Bring your infants! They <laughs> fucking human centipede it. Holy shit. <laughs> like, fucking, the teacher has a staple gun, and you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Just, just a staple wow, gun? Well, well, in the middle of the fucking, in the middle of the fucking fucking. In the middle? <laughs> in the middle of the fucking fucking. Of the fucking fucking. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but a lot of seniors in orchestra, like, a lot of them said they were gonna major in engineering. Is really? That, is that, like, the new thing? It might be. Is that what them kids... Oh, damn teenagers. If anything, we're the kids. That's but, true. But is that, is that, like, the new thing? I feel like... Is, I don't know. Because I feel like engineering is such a broad thing. 
Right, but it is—it is it is like one of those jobs where it's like you are going to actually make money. Yeah, that's true, and like especially going to our school, it, it, we do go to a very nice school. And yeah, it's like wasn't it like one of the top freaking schools in the state? It's 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 up there, like just in general. Like we go to a nice ass school district. We are so. good people. Yeah, no. Well, no, we're not good people. We go to a we, good We district. go to a school with good people. Um. <laughs> we, we go You're really to... gonna call the fucking, both our friends and the popular kids at our school good people. Uh, we, we, we go, we go to a school of people with generally good education. Because if you look at yes. people. I can it, accept that one. Because if you, a great example is my cousins who moved here probably two years ago and originally they lived in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. So, in uh, down there uh, my oldest cousin, she's actually uh, she's in my brother's grade. But Is she, she in choir? Because I think I saw her at the concert. No, she's in a concert orchestra though. Oh, okay. But she was in, like, in all advanced classes in, like, Norfolk, and, like, just instantly dr- got dropped down to standard classes when she got here, because right. we just have, generally speaking... Generally speaking, of course. Generally speaking, we just have a better education system. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to go that far. You don't have to go all the way to Virginia to see we we go to a good school. You can just go to one of the city schools. You can go to, like... Yeah, you can go to, like, one of the Twin Cities district schools, and they're still not as good. Ooh! No, that's... Factual information. That's just a known fact. There is... Ooh, known fact! <laughs> Ooh. Sick, sick fact, bro. You recite that data. <laughs> It's just, there's like a fucking scientist reciting a, like, statistic. So, yeah. uh, in conclusion, you tell him, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's like one dude in the audience, and it's like his son. James, sit down. Like, sorry, Dad! Yeah, it's James. his son. James, sit the fuck down. It's his son, that's... He's like, oh, you tell him, brother! You I'm your tell father. Him. Yeah. You tell him, brother! I'm your father, James. It's like, shut up, son. <laughs> I'll never love you. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> and then he violently fucked on stage. <laughs> okay, it's one thing to talk about <laughs> underage teenagers violently fucking each wait, other wait, wait. sensually. No, no, no. These are These are seniors, so they are technically not underage. They're... It's one thing to talk about young adults violently fucking consensually on stage. <laughs> it's another thing to talk about a fucking scientist fucking his son on stage. <laughs> fucking scientist. <laughs> a, 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 literally a fucking scientist. <laughs> <laughs> what was that now? That was, he just bangs on his legs. He's like. That was like a bottom. But we don't have drums. Gotta get freaking our drummer. In. Yeah, we should we should invite our drummer not to talk on the podcast. He'll just no, be he's in like the, the ninja Brian. Yeah, he'll just be in the corner and occasionally we'll just like you'll point to him. Occasionally, he's like the guitar player from that freaking joke we came up with. Uh oh, yeah. oh my god! Have we ever talked about that joke? No. On the podcast? Would you like to explain it? I would. Okay, here, get a guitar. Get your guitar. Oh god. Um, basically, we had this joke where like there's this. The most American, like, white man who ever lived. And he's, like, a racist, homophobic, sexist motherfuck. And, like, there would be a guitar to, like, play he's off like a, every... He's a, he's a stand-up comedian. Is Yeah, the, is essentially. The and, yeah, and there would be, like, a guitarist to fucking play off each one of his racist comments. So, like, for example... Yeah, see if you, um, can, see if you can't figure out something on the dot. Cause oh, God, um... I might have to steal a joke from Letterman, because I just watched Letterman, and he had a decent <laughs> joke. Okay, just... But just... no, that's fucking... That's not particularly racist or anything. Um, shit. Damn it, what were some of the ones we came up with? I can only remember uh, the one... Uh... I don't remember. Shit. 
Just, um, this just, is probably going to be bad, but um, just... uh, some people say that black people should have rights. I say that our flag is wet, red, white, and blue, not red, white, and black. Oh. I missed. I do it again. <laughs> You have to, you have to, you have to sound like you're from Louisiana too. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, so <laughs> some, some people, um, some people they say that way. Hey, black people should have as many rights as want. My wife told me the other day, uh, "Honey, I want a job." I said, "You do have a job, honey. It's making food for me." <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm on the fly. And then we had one that's like, um. You know, some people they say I don't play, I don't pay my guitar player enough because he's Asian. I say no. I don't pay him at all. Oh yeah. You have to do under the bridge. <laughs> oh yeah, wasn't the joke? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like because he's the guitar I say, player. I say I say no. I don't pay him at all. I don't pay him at all. <laughs> Son. Stop playing that guitar! Sir! Just like... <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Boy, you better listen to me! <laughs> no, Papa, no! Oh my god. That's a joke uh, me and our drummer came up with. I think he came up with how it. Did and that then, even, how did that even come to I me? I think he came up with it with his brother and then he let me in on it. No, Papa, no! We just yelled, <laughs> No, Papa, no! And then I, I think I added, not the belt. Not the belt. Uh, no, puppy. Yes, uh, see, si, puppy, see. Si. Our podcast is in full swing. We made uh, we made two racist jokes, a sexism joke, and an abuse joke. So we're uh. Oh, also, we've talked about violently fucking people in the nostril <laughs> till earwax comes out. <laughs> that too. Podcast is in full swing, but we actually have a lot to cover. So I have to. <laughs> I got the right chord. Wow. It was an A. Come on, we actually have a lot to talk okay, about. Okay, here, so I'll that's transition. A... That's good. That was that was honestly kind of bad. I know. Okay. Shut up. I'm gonna fucking... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I put my pick in between my guitar strings, and Johnny tried to do it again. It just, like, flew under <laughs> all of the strings. Shut up, I'm not a guitar. <laughs> Either. I was gonna say guitar S, but I decided <laughs> not to. Okay, oh. now we talk about new now stuff. Now we talk about rock bands. We talk about rock and video games, and holy shit, is there a lot to talk about? There is actually. Okay, rock band, uh, rock band live. So for you... for um, uh, yeah, why don't you explain this? Because I rock... always get rock band and guitar hero mixed up. Yeah, um, rock band live. Not rock band, but that's fucking Guitar Hero. Like. Exactly. I like how you're talking about how you <laughs> always get it mixed up, and I know better. And honestly, fuck it. At, at least I know which one is which. So um, here's the thing with Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero. They have this new live function. They have a new guitar controller. Guitar Hero Live. Yeah, it's a new controller. They don't have the CGI graphics. And I believe we talked about that on yeah, the podcast. we've talked about it. I don't know if we've talked about the set list. They revealed some songs for it. Not. Yeah, they're, they're, all, they're all like good. rock pop. Uh, yeah, the um, Black Keys, Fall Out Boy. I think there was a later era Green Day song in there from one of the trilogy albums. Oh, great. That's great. Actually, Some, somebody tried to defend those albums to me, and I'm like, what's what's a good song off them? And he said, Make Out Party. So I listened to Make Out Party, and I'm like, this song is fucking stupid. I don't like it at all. <laughs> this, <laughs> I love how matter of a fact that sounded. This song <laughs> is fucking, fucking stupid. stupid. I don't like it at all. I, I used to think 21st Century Breakdown was a bad album, so at least convinced me that it was good. Yeah, yeah like, 21st Century Breakdown is... It's right. I don't like 21 Guns, but, like, the other songs I listened to off there, I listened to a few other songs. I liked them. So, I mean, uh, what the fuck, whatever. I don't know. I'll Trilogy like albums, though. Again. Trilogy albums, they're not doing it right. Like, they're trying to go for, like... They're trying to replicate their older sound where it's simpler punk that's not, like, political, like, American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown. They're not doing simple punk right. Oh, so it's, it's, it's kind of what they, it's kind of what they envisioned, this might be a bad, uh, this might be a bad metaphor, but it's kind of like their let it be. 
It's like it, in oh, a oh, way, they except, tried. except they tried. Yeah, except let it be became something else entirely. Like let That's it be, it's true. complicated to talk about. But yeah, they started out the same way. The issues, the the music on the trilogy albums. It's not amazing, but it's 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 good. It could make for like yeah. a good song. Like the only song I've heard from it is like X Kid, which I think is from like Uno. I don't even think I've heard that. It, it's it's all right. I mean, right. like you've make been up, saying, make it make out party could have been good, but the lyrics are fucking stupid. Like it's like, look, we're using clever sexual innuendos, and I'm like, those sexual innuendos aren't even remotely clever. <laughs> well, we've also been bred. From the fire and flames of the red hot chili peppers, so... They at least have a decent innuendo from time to time. Ex- exactly my point. We have been bred we have been, hot. <laughs> we have been trained with high quality sexual innuendos. <laughs> it's the highest of We've also ones. listened to freaking the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. Oh, um, And they have also that's... high quality sexual innuendos. Oh, the highest. Especially Zeppelin. The highest. Um... But yeah, um, the Guitar Hero soundtrack... I think they had a Carrie Underwood song in there. Oh, they had a fucking pop song in there. That's and it, they announced like twelve or so songs, and I'm like, wow, I'm even less excited for this game. They announced six songs for Rock Band Four. I became substantially more excited because it's just it's like a rock centric set list. Did you say announced? like Lazaretto? Lazaretto by Jack White. Um, somebody told me about the Killers, which I actually do think is also in Guitar Hero Live. Oh. Um, yeah. They announced Hail to the King by Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, and I'm like, I like that song. And then they announced uh, some classic rock songs. I believe they mentioned Fleetwood Mac. I can't remember the other bands. But there was nothing that I didn't, like... Like, hate. There was nothing that I didn't at least mildly appreciate the presence of. And they're keeping the same controllers, aren't they? They're keeping the same controllers, and it's compatible with the content from the previous games. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to call it right now. Honestly... I'm pretty sure Guitar Hero is going to sell more, because that's just a bigger demographic. But, I feel like... I can see that. I feel like it's the lesser of two evils, and I know I'm not using that phrase correctly, but bear with me here. (laughs) So, um... So Rock Band is just like, it's like another Rock Band Guitar Hero game from back then. It's, like, really good and really cool, and it's got all the music, and it's got the sim controller, and everything's all diddly squat. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't diddly squat mean nothing? (laughs) Everything's all nothing. (laughs) Everything's all diddly squat. But Guitar Hero is more... I got my diddly squat. And uh, Guitar Hero is more modern, which, if you think about it, a lot of rock bands that are still around, like, I would even bring the example of I'm With You. They're becoming a little more modern. Alright, let's go back to Green Day, for an um, example. Okay, I can see Green Day. Yeah, they're, they're becoming more modern. I'm With You, it's not necessarily more modern, but they brought in a new guitarist with, a, I guess you'd say, a slight, slightly more uh, poppy sound. Yeah, like a, a more modern. Exactly. He's a much more well, modern guitarist. Well, I mean... Guitarist. You could also you could also refute that with the example of Jack White, Foo oh, Fighters, very true. and they they both released albums last oh, year. Oh yeah, let's. Weezer let's... deliberately tried to go for a '90s sound also on yeah. the last one. So yeah, not all the rock bands, and Foo Fighters is probably like one of the most popular oh, rock yeah. bands right now. Oh yeah, like it's probably the most popular and the and the most. Rock. Yeah, it's like... The, the most popular that's, like, yeah, it's, still rock, rock. Like, pure rock. Like, not even remotely pop. Which I think is a great example of how people are still, like, into that. Like, a lot of... A lot of rock bands, like, we keep going back to the example of Green Day. They're like, well, pop music is becoming a hella more popular. Let's bring Everclear as an example, too. They're like, oh, pop music is becoming a hella more popular, so if we want to sell more records, we should change our sound up to be more modern and more poppy. on the last album, Everclear is instead trying to um, ride off the success of, like, metal. Really? Yeah, didn't I show you their new single, and it's, like, just <laughs> no. an extremely generic, uh, like, radio metal song? Oh, maybe. It's the man who broke his own heart. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's painfully generic. It's okay. 
painfully genetic. But I will I will say I I appreciate it for it's it's actually more rocking than uh, stuff. That's a shame. Did we ever did we ever discuss slow motion daydream on the podcast? I feel like we did. We did. Okay. But yeah, um, actually, you could a few years ago, um, other rock bands were trying to like, um, get we, into other we, trends like um, ah yeah, two thousand. Well, um, Muse. I don't want to say too much bad about them, but. Because I haven't heard the album in question, but apparently their last album, uh, The Second Law, was uh, more electro and poppy than even their usual stuff, which you can hear in yeah, Madness. But I feel like... Apparently, according to my brother who listened to it, he said they used... There's like a bit of a dubstep influence in there. Ah. Which Korn also made a dubstep album in... Oh, God! Korn? Korn. I, no, I know who you're talking about. I saw my brother had it in his room, and I looked at the back, and each song had a dubstep like musician on it, and most of them were Skrillex. Dear God. Yeah, and I'm like, That's... I might have to listen to this now. And Jeez. then, of course, there's freaking Ratitude. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, what I'm trying to think of other rock bands who have like. But I feel like there. Weezer. I feel like Weezer did a good job at that because they released. Oh. No, 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 I don't mean Ratitude. I mean, they released Ratitude, and then they're like, guys, we fucked up. <laughs> well, that's because nobody bought Ratitude. Yeah, exactly. It, well, then again, then again, the album they released the year after that, it's not like that was any better. What was it? Was it Hurley? Or? It was Hurley. Oh. Well, actually, I'm not going to say it wasn't any better. Hurley is better than Ratitude, but most of it's painfully forgettable and trying way too hard to be like, guys, look, we're rock. It's it's essentially like I've compared it. People have like personified Weezer albums like if they were people. And I said Hurley is the wannabe jock who pretends like he's a rock star. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a few good songs on it, but it's like, really now? Um, uh, what was I going to say? I feel like, honestly, I'm going to make a bold statement. You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> You ready for this? And, uh, and I, I know it's a bold statement because it's me and it's talking about Weezer. Oh god! I, I actually, I actually. Here's the thing. I really like the Blue album. I've always liked the Blue album. Oh, I Green album's okay. I would say, I would say everything will be all right in the end is somewhere between those two. Yeah, people. Most people consider it their third best after Blue and Pinkerton. Ah, like, I can, I can see that, because, like, I've, I've noticed, like, I listen to a lot more songs off of Everything Will Be Alright in the End. Right, people are, people are, like, most people think it's their best since at least Green or Maladroit. That, that's my personal opinion, is that it's their best album since Maladroit. Yeah. At least. Yeah, what was released after Maladroit? Make I mean, Believe. Like, Make Believe. Followed by Red Album, Ratitude, and Hurley. Okay, yeah, so that was yeah. that was kind of the deep period. Right? Red album could have been really good. Like yeah, there there are enough songs written around that time to make like a cohesive, really awesome ten song album. The problem is the songs they picked for it, like one of them's bad and three of them are pretty mediocre. The rest oh. of the album's solid though. Really? Yeah, like half of the album is really solid, and uh the other half could have been better. But like through bonus tracks and, like, when they've released songs that didn't quite make it onto Red, people are like, oh my god, this is some of the best stuff they've ever done. Really? That's yeah. crazy. Even um, even their drummer is like, yeah, we could have picked some better songs for Red. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? I feel like... I feel like Red is exactly that. It's like, because, like, people will look at, like... Blue, and they're like, oh yeah, like, say it. So it was on there, like, Undone, like, Buddy Holly, like, big tracks. Jonas. Yeah, well, no, I'm going, like, big, big tracks. Okay, you yeah, Jonas, at, like, Jonas is, like, second tier, big. Yeah, you look at, you look at Green, it's like, well, Island of the Sun and I, Hashpipe are on the there. Sun, Hashpipe, you could, nah, you can't really make an argument for Photograph. I don't care that no, it was a single. No, Nobody knows that song. You, you can go to Pinkerton's, like, El Scorcho. Well, that's and, less a songs album. Like, people, people yeah, less so associate true. it with songs, but people are like, oh my god, peop someone on the internet said this was a classic album. And then, and then for Red, it's like, 
Pork and beans. Pork and That's beans. about it. But Some people will add troublemaker. I will not. <laughs> like, here's the thing. I I feel like pork and beans is up there, but I feel like it's another second tier kind of popular. Yeah, I can. that's the only song off Red they still do live regularly. Which makes sense, because right. it's, it's just... Right, it's a shame, though, because Red has some good stuff on it. Huh. I'm trying to... Th- greatest Man That Ever Lived. Some people hate that song. I, I fucking love that song. That um, song's awesome. Um, Dreamin', Angel and the One. You don't know any of these songs. They're good. No. Yeah, I know. Greatest um, Man was a single. It was a very small single, though. They play that occasionally. Yeah. You, you, the, the, the divide... There's there's two divides I feel between you and I in the senses of music. There's there's the electro divide and then there's the pop punk divide. Cause I don't right. mind pop punk. I wouldn't consider Weezer pop punk, but they're definitely on the pop spectrum. I'd say like power pop. E- but, but what's the difference? Yeah, there there's a slight one. Pop yeah, punk. Exactly. Pop punk is more like Green Day. And power- let's just let's for the sake of argument, let's just say pop rock. Okay. Because that's very general. So, so I'm not super into pop rock, but I know you listen to a lot of Weezer and, like, uh, The Killers. And yeah. And we'll, we'll get into that later. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just... How do I describe it? It's like the songs are good, but I feel like after a while, most of them just don't stick with me. I can see that. I, I probably have such a high tolerance for it, because, like, my favorite band is the Beatles, and yeah. the genre of power pop is essentially, the like, uh, the music of the Beatles, but with, like, the uh, sound of Nirvana. Yeah. Well, musically. Vocally, not necessarily. But it's, like, essentially Beatles songs played <laughs> by, like, a punk band-ish. I can see where you're going with that. Oh, what's next on the agenda? We went on a fucking... Yeah, this is gonna be a long-ass podcast. Yeah, we're already, like, a half hour in, and we haven't even... We've gotten to the first item on our list of, like... Uh, seven. 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 Uh, Pixels, you told me about this. Oh, my God. We, we just watched the trailer. <laughs> and Pixels is a movie that's coming out this year? I believe this year. If not, then this? 2016? Yeah, this year or next year. It's an Adam Sandler movie. Oh, yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Wait, well, could no, you... Can we talk about the premise of this Could movie? you briefly explain the premise of this movie? In a world <laughs> where Earth is a thing. 1982. Where Earth is a thing. <laughs> I was trying to say it took place on Earth, but I... So it's 82, right? 1982. And NASA's, NASA's, like, NASA's, NASA's like, we're going to launch a time capsule into space and maybe find aliens. And, and like then, you do, like you do with time capsules. It's like, well, what was life like back there? So you throw in like, you throw in like a newspaper, maybe like some music. They threw in some old classic video games. Like, Pac-Man, Galaga, like, Donkey like, Kong. Like well, what I imagine to be like 2600 games. Yeah, I believe I think they showed them on screen and they were 2600 games. Yeah. And then um, they launched them into space. The aliens see this. Yeah, they, the aliens actually found it. That's And they see it as a threat. And so they take the video games... And they make, like, big-ass versions of the video game characters. So now you have fucking Pac-Man on Earth eating the buildings. You have Donkey Kong throwing barrels at shit. Yes, I would like to, uh... Oh, yeah, let's put up some screenshots. Yeah, the I will, there. I will, uh... I will put that up. Yes. Yeah, because the, the designs are actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's... Um, it legitimately looks pretty sweet, but... Pretty it's, ballin'. It's also... It's also an Adam Sandler movie. Have you ever seen the Freddy W skit, Old School vs. New School? I don't think so, I might have. It reminds me of that. It like, the same kind of style that they did. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like Galaga ships and, like, Pac-Man and, like, freaking like, Nathan Drake and, like, um, and, like, Ezio from Assassin's Creed. Oh, that's Creed cool. Are, like, fighting. Yeah, it's a, it's a Freddy W video. <laughs> He's yeah. good at special effects. Oh, they're they're very good at special effects. Like if you look at like 
uh, VGHS is a great example. Like, I feel like some of those effects are, are played off better than in, like, motion pictures. Like, in oh, well, yeah. movies. Because he's probably consciously aware, like, okay, um, audiences know when they see a bad CGI effect. We want to make that not quite as, like, obviously CGI. Not as prominent. And, and like... When you look at it, and maybe it's because I watch all the behind the scenes too, with like, this is totally all CG. Like, if you look at it, you can see that it's CG. Right. But, it, I mean, it's still damn good CG. Like, at first glance, it's like, well, that's. that's oh, you! Yeah, that looks realistic. I, I don't have high hopes for this movie. I have high hopes that it'll be bad, somewhat. No, 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 I have high hopes that it'll be good, somewhat ironically. I feel like, I feel like this is almost like getting off on the success of Wreck It Ralph. Like, oh my God, you're totally right. Yeah, cause, cause but here's the thing. Wreck It Ralph was made by Disney, correct? Yes. That's already a big. Upper advantage. They're like, Money. and I feel like they took, I feel like they took Wreck It Ralph, as, um, when did the Lego Movie come out? Like a year after Wreck It Ralph or something. Year or two, yeah. But I feel like those two movies are especially interesting because, of course, people since like, since the dawn of time. <laughs> I was gonna say that, but since like. Since, like, the 70s or, like, the 80s, they're like, I know, we should make a movie about Lego. Or, I know, we should make a movie about video games. Because that's going to sell. Right. But what they did is they're like, alright, people keep saying they want these and they're going to sell. We have to make sure that this isn't god-awful. Because that's probably what they're expecting. Right, and I think the thing with both of them is they went with, like, um, instead of just doing the same tired old, tired old thing where it's like, see the fucking yeah. video game characters do video game shit, but yeah. do realistic yeah, yeah, motion yeah. picture stuff. Or see the Lego people do Lego shit, but do yeah, realistic yeah, yeah. motion Cause, picture cause stuff. Yeah, because in, like, the Lego movie, they have, like, the master builders and the whole, like... Right. Plot line behind I'm, that. I'm going. I'm going with like the art style, though. Well, both of them are really meta, because it's like Wreck It Ralph is about an arcade, and then That's true. Lego Movie, like you said, is about the freaking. I'm not going to spoil the plot twist, but it's about the master builders. Yeah. And then, um, but what I was referring to was they both have sort of a stylized art style that's supposed to like mimic what they're uh, making a movie about, but also look more uh, professional, like a step above that. What, 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 um, I thought was amazing about the Lego movie is we, we had this discussion, um... In the Lego movie podcast? Yeah, in the Lego movie podcast. That was so long ago. Yeah, but was it, wasn't, like, most of it, like, stop motion? No, it was mostly CG, but it was designed to look like stop motion. Because either, either way, that's... That's like, some dedication. Yeah, I, like, I just, just that concept I got, is a nice touch. I got the DVD, and I was listening to the commentary, and they um they were talking about, like, uh, you know the scene where, um, like, Unikitty's home place gets attacked, and then they, they lurk, they're, like, in the water. Yeah. Before they get rescued by oh, the yeah, pirate. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were talking about, like, oh, God, how do we do the water? And they had to um, make it look sort of like actual water, but they added Lego blocks in there to make it not look like shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they because, had a serious struggle with that. Because if there like, was just, because if there was just like Lego figures like floating in what just looked like water, it would kind of yeah, be. BS. I think other scenes in the movie that did use actual Lego blocks for water, like um, when uh, Metal Beard is talking about um sailing to a place, and it's like. Oh, yeah. And then also when Emmett's showering at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, <coughs> I don't know. They had some dedication to that. Yeah, just the, just the concept of they're like, we should make this look like stop motion is amazing. Because they totally could have just not done that. Right. They could have just made it like every other Lego movie. Yeah, exactly. And then um, Wreck-It Ralph, it's um less noticeable, but like a few of the... um characters in it, like, particularly, uh, Felix and, uh, Pac-Man's cameo, they move, like, 
characters who would in oh. the old 8-bit game. Oh, and Gene. Uh, Gene especially. Oh, yeah. Because he's, like, pouring himself a beer, and it's like... Dip, dip, dip. It's, it's, like, slowly dripping down instead of being a cohesive thing, and it actually looks cool because it's supposed to be stylized like that. Yeah, I, 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 um, what did I enjoy? Just the whole opening scene where you see, like, the 2D, like, you see the actual Wreck-It Ralph arcade game. Oh, yeah, and he's and talking about it. And then, like, it. zooms in, and it's, like, all, it's just, like, all turns into 3D. Oh, yeah. I do like, after that, how they zoom out and show the entire arcade, and you can see, um, they show each game, and it looks like, um, the original incarnation of that game. Yeah, but exactly. they animated it diff- like when they uh, they show Street Fighter Two and Ryu and Ken are like, well, I mean, day is over. Let's go get like some food or something, yeah. and they just walk let's off. Go grab a beer. Let's go to the Tapper. Yeah. Let's go. Oh yeah, that- I like how they had uh, the game Tapper is like a bar essentially. <laughs> that, was- that was awesome. You've never steered me wrong, Tapper. Listen, listen. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Are, are we done? I think we good. I yeah, Pixels. Um, check out the trailer. Um, oh, oh, there's one bit in the trailer I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan knows what it is. Um, I don't even know his name. Towards the end We of talked the, about Pac-Man. Yeah, uh, towards the end of the trailer, because um, the aliens made the video game characters and they're like all evil and stuff because they're not the actual fucking characters because they don't exist, obviously. But um, yeah. they... Uh, the, the heroes, they call in the creator of Pac-Man. I don't think it's the actual creator of Pac-Man, because he... But, he but... He says how at all. Yeah, but... If it is... If it is, mad props to him. Um, what happens is they call him in, and he's like, Pac-Man is not bad. I he is my to, son. He is my son. And then he goes to talk to Pac-Man, and he's like, Oh, look at how big you have grown. And he's like, I know you are a good boy. And then Pac-Man bites his hand and is like, Oh, get out of this stupid thing! <laughs> it's... Yeah, that it's that, a, it's that was the one bit that made me laugh non-ironically. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise... I mean, like, I don't, most Adam Sandler movies aren't too bad. Right, but, but no, none you, of them are really too good yeah, either. You watch, you watch Adam Sandler movies... Because you want to watch an Adam Sandler movie, not because you want to watch a movie. Right, it's just like, I'm in the mood for that, but something else. Yeah, of course. Ugh, that was long. Oh, Splatoony. Squid Kid. (laughs) (laughs) Squid Kid. Um, Nintendo released a TV commercial for Splatoon. Yeah, it it, was. it, It featured a song. It was amazing. You should just... No, 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 no. Pa- pause. Pause the podcast right pause. now. Yeah, and we want you to look up... Splatoon Squid Kid commercial. Yes, and, and we'll wait. We'll wait. Did you enjoy it? We didn't. I know you did. I know, I know yeah, you did. Well, yeah, I know you didn't. It was... Uh, we called in the U.S. military. We, we've, we've talked a lot about Splatoon in this podcast. I really like Splatoon. Specifically you. Yes. You can, are, can, can I... Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to put in a flashback to when I yelled about the inkling in the last podcast. (laughs) Inkling! What's up? I like Splatoon. And that, 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 this shows you how much I enjoy Splatoon. But, yeah, like, I feel like... And I feel like we even had that... Do we have that... Do we have, have an E3 podcast? I could have sworn we did. I don't think so, because we just made the reaction video and never uploaded it. Oh, yeah. Once again, if anybody wants that, just talk at us in the comments. and if we Talk can find at it, us. If we can find it, we'll upload it. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's lost. I think it's buried, buried in the... Uh, in the recesses of your laptop. Yeah, which we can't even access as of now, so... That's true. I do think for this year's E3, we should try doing that again and have me actually not yeah. be a lazy fucking upload it. Yeah, exactly, in the actual day. When is that? It's, it's coming Mid-June. up. Mid-June. I don't know exactly the date, though. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll figure it Nintendo's out. Nintendo's doing another digital event, so, I mean, same basic thing. But, like, I was, I was like, interested in Splatoon because, uh... 
I feel like when it comes to gaming, I am more modern <laughs> the, yeah, between the two of us. And I feel like Nintendo has found that nice mix of, like, this is going to attract the modern, like, uh, like, shoot 'em up Not shoot 'em up Yeah. Shoot 'em up mm, Like the first person, not, not first person shooter. It's a third person shooter. It's just a shooter. Shooter. The shoot, the fucking, it's like, essentially the kid's version of Call of Duty, except they don't fucking make a new game every year. Yeah, once again... Once again, we can go back to the Lego Movie and Wreck-It Ralph comparison, where it's like, okay, here's the thing. Shooters are popular, so we should make a shooter. Let's not fuck it up. Yeah. And it doesn't look and like they are gonna fuck it up. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're gonna make a fuck ton of sequels, because um, I remember listening to a bit about it on the Nintendo Direct, and they're like, it'll launch with, like, four stages, and I'm like, only four stages? And they're like, we'll add more as DLC. And I'm like, oh, hell no. And they're like, for free. And I'm like... Yeah. But basically, it's like, um... How would I describe it? There's a lot of games that do that. Payday 2 is what I think is most prominent. When they released it... Payday 2 came out, like, two years ago. And they're still releasing, like, major free updates. Right. They're like, we got, like, five new guns. And... (laughs) Alright. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, let's go with it. I was gonna use TF2, but that's paid DLC, so I can't yeah, really use that as yeah, an it's... example. Well, because I guess paid 2 also still has paid DLC. Right, but they add more free stuff as well. True, yes. That's cool stuff, though. Yeah, I mean, like... Nintendo, Nintendo, like, they're good at taking things that gamers tend to think are shit and make them not shit. Like, um, I think I already mentioned they had, um... You know mobile games where they say, oh, this is free, and then you have to buy, like, half of it? Yeah. Nintendo essentially did that with a new Pokemon Rumble game. It's like, um, but they didn't ever refer to it as, like, oh, you can play it for free. They said it's free to start, and you can get the currency in-game without having to pay for it. It's just an option to pay for it. So I'm like, Nintendo, did you just do freemium right? Yeah, because I feel like here's the thing. Because, like, let's say in that Pokemon Rumble, I really want a Pikachu. So the Pikachu could be worth, like, um... That's not how Pokemon Rumble works, though. I know it's not. Point is, if I want to buy something, and it's like, well, this could cost five of these specific coins you have to purchase with money, or you can get the in-game currency. It's like... Oh, sweet. How much is it in in game currency? Oh, like 10 million. (laughs) I I think it's the same currency, though. But I think um, it's not used for stuff like that. I believe it's used to unlock, like, more levels. Yeah, no, but my point is that a lot of games do that. They're like, here's, here's, like, the premium you have to pay for this money. Right, it's like... But you you can can still buy it with the in-game one. It's just outrageous. Exactly. Which, yeah, I was like, oh my god, Nintendo actually did this right. I was so happy. Yeah, because I feel like... I feel like Nintendo already gets a bad-ish rap, because... Exactly, they do. And they're... They're doing all they can to get rid of that, and they're doing a damn good job. They are. There's only one thing they've announced recently that's upset me. Mm -hmm. They're already working on their next home console. Really? Have I not told you about the Nintendo NX? No. They've chosen to say, like pretty much nothing about it until next year, but they announced they are working on it. Yeah. Well, because, like... It's too early, I think. Well, because you got to think of it like this. you got to think of it like this. They started... Nintendo's always been known for... Uh, I feel like it's... Well, no, I really can't say that. Because I guess there's only, like, four PlayStations and three Xboxes, but uh, Nintendo also goes farther back. That's true. But I mean, like, over the course of, like, the N64 to the GameCube, like, they've always done, like, humongous step-ups in their consoles. Yeah. And I feel like the Wii U is the first time where I was ever, like, this isn't a humongous step up. Right. It's a step up, like you should do with new consoles. 
But it's not like the huge, like, oh, we have, like, a thousand times better graphics, so we have motion control now. Right. I I feel like the issue with the Wii U is, um, that was also too early, but a bit less so, because they announced it, and it's like, oh, it's an HD, so it's slightly better than, like, uh, the PS3 and Xbox. A few months later, PS4 and Xbox One are announced with substantially better graphics. Exactly. And it's like, like it or not, um, a lot of gamers care yeah, quite a bit lo- about graphics. Yeah, lo- look for the graphics. But I think, once again, I think Nintendo takes advantage of, they don't have PS4 graphics, and they don't have Xbox right, graphics. Right, they work with that, because instead they're focused, they, they have, most of their games have like a more cartoonish art style. Yeah, but I noticed I, well. I noticed during the Wii U when it was released, they started they started porting stuff. Like they ported like Batman Arkham Asylum on there or Arkham City or Arkham one si- of, Arkham Asylum is the new one which is stupid. I think it's season passes or something sure. One of, one of one of the Arkham games. They like ported that, they got Bayonetta on there. Yeah, but they still have more semi-realistic things. Yeah, the thing the thing I feel, though, is, um, their next console, I feel they should focus, um, because I know Nintendo always likes to have something to make their console more unique, so it's not just another face in the crowd, but I feel like, um, while they should do that, they should also wait on it so they can make it, um, at least closer to the power of whatever next-gen consoles, um, yeah, exactly. Microsoft and Sony are planning, because, um, that was an issue with the Wii, and it's still an issue with the Wii U, is um, third-party companies, their games for uh, PS, PS3, Xbox 360, or now PS4, Xbox One, um, the issue has been, um, it's been harder to port them to Nintendo consoles, because Nintendo consoles aren't as powerful, so you have to yeah, you tone to, it down a bit. Yeah, you have to tone it down, exactly. I think EA... There was one company, it was either, like, EA or Activision or something, they said they were going to stop porting to Nintendo consoles because it's hard. Yeah, I mean, because I feel like... I feel like, sadly, Nintendo's always done that. Let's take the N64, for example. That is right around the time when, like, the PlayStation and the first Xbox came out, right? Xbox, I think, was late. Xbox was GameCube era. Okay. Dreamcast. 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 This, the point still remains that those were CDs, and you could create CDs not only a lot cheaper, but it was a lot easier. The Nintendo 64 runs on hunks right. of plastic, and those were notoriously more expensive to produce on. Right. I do I do feel in Nintendo 64, um, they sort of... Um, they sort of made up for that by having um, just more powerful specs than the PlayStation. Because yeah. PlayStation was 32 bit and 64 was 64 bit, obviously. It's true, and while. I feel like we could talk about this more, um, especially with like the Bit Wars, because that was a big thing. We could have and... a whole podcast about the Bit Wars. Did we? We could. Oh, yeah. And I could even I could even debate that the bit was I still a thing now. It's just not. Really... Yeah, it's not with bits though. It's with just graphics. Yeah, but it's like which one is like the point remains. The point remains. Which one looks the best? Right. Let's let's move on. Otherwise, this podcast is going to be five hours long. It's already five hours long. Do we actually want to? Do we actually want to take a short break? Because I feel like I need a short break. Alright. I, I feel in order so for this podcast to not become three hours as opposed to the like one and a half hours it's already looking like it's going to be, I feel like um, we should cut the news story of the day at the end. Alright. Just, I'm, just I'm, this once. I'm good with that. Alright. Take a break? Yeah, just press pause. <laughs> What is that? I don't even know. Shit. 
butterfly. Oh. Let's do it. Yeah, let, me, let me just let me just share some amazingness with you. Oh God. <laughs> I have to get my game face on. Don't, game don't, face? don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we should. Come on. Let's, uh, put that back. Okay, yeah, here, I'll just fucking. <laughs> I would probably kill you, I'll be honest. Probably. There is no probably. Alright. At the very least, we wouldn't be on speaking terms anymore. <laughs> Bare minimum. We are back! We are back. From... I'm, I'm front. You're in front? I, uh, can I be in front? Uh, can I be see, on the top? No, no, you see his thing, because, like, uh, I want to go on the bottom. Whoever, yeah, okay. Alright, I'll be on top. Welcome Get back! Top. <laughs> Welcome back! I mean, that's not the worst song I could have referenced when you said we're back. And back from the break. Back from the break. We we're... made a mistake. We're going to make... A birthday cake. I hope it don't break. Because it's more than I can take. And I just ate some Frosted Flakes. And... I actually did just eat some Frosted Flakes with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and it was good. This is why you write the songs. <laughs> Let's go uh, to the album of the podcast, which for this week... Wait, week... drum roll, drum roll. Peaking the fucking mic. I'm going to tone that down when we edit. No. <laughs> no, just add another ear rape warning. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's clean! And then with the Giants, which was only released like a month ago, right? Here, um... I'm gonna put it down so I can add like a sample to introduce it. Uh, please do. And okay, yeah. And it was only released like when do we go to the Giants concert? I feel like it was about a month ago. Yeah, probably. So it it came out extremely recently, and there my regards. Look at that. You want to sit down with it, boy. Hey, let me tell you about my operation! Exactly. That's a song on the album. It's a good song. It makes me happy inside. It makes me moist inside. It makes me feel it, like it, a cake. A cake. A freshly baked cake with chocolate frosting that fucking got thrown in a small child's face and it exploded and he died violently. While earwax was, uh... <laughs> While earwax was flowing out of his left nostril. But, uh... Um... What is it with me and weird fucking sentences on this podcast? No, but originally they weren't even intending on making an album. It was all for, uh, the relaunch of Dadla Song, which they did. We've talked about this. Yeah. D did we? Yeah, we talked about Dadla Song. Okay, yeah. So it was the re-opening, relaunching... Of dial a song, and they just took, like, songs from that, and they're like, these are the best! Let's make an album! <laughs> was it just the best, or did they have a bunch? Or did they just put all the dial song songs on there? No, because upon its release, there were some songs on Glean that were not on dial a song yet. Really? So, okay. But they got on there eventually. Okay, but are, were there any songs released for dial a song beforehand that weren't on Glean? Uh, there were... There is still a ton of songs that are on dial song that aren't on Glee. But were they released before or after the album? Uh, they were released before. Like, um, okay. There's there's a song that they made called I Was Dancing in a Lesbian Bar. And oh, yeah, I was looking just on their, uh, um, like, albums on my Zune, because it said, like, look at the freaking marketplace. And I'm like, okay, let's see what else they might be giants to put out. I and, was dancing uh, in a lesbian bar. And, like, it didn't show me the full title. It showed me, um... Let's see. It's down here somewhere. 
Oh, I'm a coward. Is that on a... Yeah, that is. Oh. Yeah, it just showed me I was dancing in the lesbian. <laughs> and the dancing. cover art just says dancing in the lesbian. Yeah, but but no, there are... There's a handful. There's a lot more now because Dialogue Song's still going. Right. There's a... Damn it, Henry. His cat just opened the door. Damn it, Henry. Just, just careful with Henry, dude. Ethan, did you just throw him? Yes. Jesus, animal he's, abuse on the he's, podcast. He's dude. a cat. He falls out on his feet. Oh, I fell down on my face. Good. Mm. But, no, what were you saying? You said this was, like, one of the better Giants albums. I re- when I re-listened to it, I was like, eh, I thought kind of too highly of it. But, um... Yeah. It does have probably some of my favorite Giant songs on it. Like, Erase and I Can Help the Next in Line are, like, up. They're, like, contenders for, like, some of my favorite Giant songs. Yeah, like, I feel like, as a seasoned Giants As a seasoned seasoned fucking Giants veg. Oh, Answer, answer, uh, that's not one of my favorites, but it's a solid song. I think they're, I think they played it on Conan, or are planning to play it on Conan. Oh, are they? So. Uh, oh, you know how David Letterman just had his last show a while ago? Oh, yeah, with, uh, with the Oh, yeah, I should, talk, I should talk about that a little with bit. With the fuse. Um, yeah, can can we talk about that a little bit? Let's talk about it'll, my band. <laughs> no, it'll, it'll end up being related to Giants in the end. Oh, uh, yeah. But, no, on their, yeah, his last show was, like, this Wednesday, and it was, it was really good, because he had, like, just friggin' montages of all the shit that he's done over the years. Yeah, you know how he has, like, top ten lists all the time? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. He had one that's just, um, it was, like, gets to a band on his show several times, and it's, like, the top ten, ten things they wish they could say to him. And some of them were actually really funny. Like, they had Jim Carrey come up, and he's like, Honestly, Dave, I think you're a bit of an overactor. <laughs> and then, of course, he fucking, like, does like, this with his hair. Yeah, like, flips And he's it. like, yeah, he pulls a Jim Carrey, basically. Yeah. And yeah, and then, like I said, Foo Fighters, they play Everlong. Um, yeah, though, I, I looked on my Facebook the other day, and the Giants posted, like, freaking, thanks, Dave, for giving us our first, like, national television appearance. And they linked a video from, like, 1989. That's sick. Yeah. Um, what was, I think I've seen that performance. I must have. Oh, it was a song I knew and liked, but I can't remember what it was now. Oh, uh, then I probably know it. <laughs> definitely know it because <laughs> all the giants I've heard you've probably heard yeah like the only giants I haven't heard is like I haven't heard all of Mink Car or Long Tall Weekend mm. but those are generally what about, considered didn't, to be. didn't you say when you were at the Giants concert they played a song like Authenticity Trip that was off of B-Sides album or something uh yeah yeah the one that first have they played like uh I think it was off an album called this album raises new and troubling questions yeah which is one of their B side albums so. have you heard that uh I have not I need to I need to you get gotta that. get on all the because they have a bunch of B sides albums well what do they have they have they got lost which I've heard they've got uh I forget what it's called it's like. It's like, I don't know what it's called, but it's got like... And the extent of the Giants I have on my soon, Dial a Song, John Henry, and Queen. Yeah, I mean, I can see that with you, because like, we... Yeah, I, we... I debated putting Factory Showroom on there, but other than that... Yeah, I don't know, like, Glean is, Glean is good. Glean is really good, yeah, like, I was listening to it, and I'm like... No, even even though like some of these songs aren't like amazing, all of them are at least they're all better than okay. They're all good. Yeah, like what? Well, like let, let me see that. Oh, uh, I really liked Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, yeah, that's one of the more rocking ones too. Yeah, I, I uh, liked I liked it because it felt like more of a balance of their electro and rock elements, and then even a little jazz at the end with um. Let me tell you about my operation. Glenn. Oh, that's such a good song. Oh, let me tell you. It's it's good, and, I, then, and then Glean at the end is also like the title track, um, is kind of jazzy too. I like uh I like the songs that's more like horn based. Yeah. Like I remember when uh once I played Cloisonne, which is off of Join Us, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Because <laughs> it's like a pretty much all horns, but like but like uh let me tell you about my operation and like Music Jail. 
I really like. Oh, yeah, Music Jail was good. I remember, I was like, why is it called Press 1 and 2? And then I'm like, that's why. Because yeah. it, like, switches to a different song, but it, like, flows really well. Oh, it's just so good. And they released... I, rem- I, I they like released, Underwater Woman. They released it as 1 and 2 on dial a song, so they're two separate oh, separately? things. separately? Yeah. That's cool. But, yeah, um, Underwater Woman was good. It, it's alright. Like, when I first... When I first heard it on dial a song, I was like, this is... This isn't that good. <laughs> it's one of the songs on the album I can uh, remember the tune of off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. Like, um... I, I, I remember the tunes to Erase, Underwater Woman, um, Answer, oh, Next but in I, Line. But I like Good To Be Alive. That's a... I don't remember Good To Be Alive. I remember I liked it, but I can't really remember it. It's... Uh, I'll, it, I... What else do I like? Uh, End of the Rope is really good. You see, I feel like that was another one. Well, when I first heard it, I was like, "This, I, I don't enjoy this nearly as much as everything else." But it's grown really? on me. I feel like unpronounceable is like just classic giants. Yeah, it obviously is. Damn, what's, damn, damn, damn. What, what's some classic giants on here? Unpronounceable, un- like freaking like uh, erased to an extent. Yeah, it's not like classic classic giants. I feel like answer is a good example. It, it has the sound of classic giants, yeah. Um, Madam, I challenge you to a duel as classic giants lyrically. Oh yeah, like um, like I'm a coward, maybe. Hate the villanelle, maybe. Maybe I I, I don't know because I feel like they change their sound quite a lot, but they always keep the same basic thing. Yeah, like, I feel like they can do pretty much anything, and you can still hear, like, yeah, this was, yeah, this I was, was written I was, Giants. I was listening to, um, I was listening to an album that we'll talk about later on Spotify, like, either yesterday or the day before, and, um, I got a bunch of ads, and I was listening to Glean on my way here, and all the Lazy Boyfriends came on, I'm like, damn Spotify ads, and I'm like, I'm like, wait, I'm listening yeah. on my Zune, there's no ads, and I'm like, Oh my god, they're doing a pop song. <laughs> yeah. And it was good. But it's it's so like pop though. Yeah, like like it it's kinda honestly I can't even remember. I can remember it kinda. I can't I can't even remember it. I can remember like everything else on that, but I really yeah, I haven't it. listened to this enough to like remember everything, but I remember like a few tracks a lot. Yeah. Next in line, I remember mainly because of how awesome it was at the concert. Yeah, plus, yeah, we saw it live. Yeah, so that that one's, like, permanently ingrained into my memory. I really liked, uh, I really liked how they played Erase, too. I yeah. think, I think Erase was the first song they released on that Erase song. is essentially, like, for all intents and purposes, the single of the album. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more rockin' than it is usually. Yeah, um. Like, I really like rockin'. Yeah, giants I, I love. That's why I like John Henry so much. Oh it's yeah, it's a rockin' giants. What album. else? Like Cyclops Rock. Anna is really Ng. Good. Anna Ng. I, I, that's sort of. Um, there is a bit in um unpronounceable that reminded me of Anna Ng because it's like it's very stoppy starty, which leads to like more staccato, like heavier sound. Oh yeah, it's like, I can dun, see dun, that. Dun, dun, dun. It almost sounds like a CD skipping at first. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. And I'm like, oh my god, that's cool. Um, yeah. Giants, man. Yeah, um... What else is on here? Like I said, End of the Rope is awesome. It's pretty good, yeah. It's one of my favorites, probably. Really? Yeah, I really like it. It's a bold statement. Where's the End of the Rope come? <laughs> well, it's a second-tier favorite. Yeah. If we're ranking them into tiers, um, Erase, um, Next in Line, um, and... Uh, let me tell you about my operation. Those are, like, first-tier favorites. Yeah. And then second-tier favorites are, like, um... Yeah, End of the Rope, Underwater Woman, um, Glean. Yeah, I think... I think we're good on that. I, like I think... What should we... What should we do for next week? Oh, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Yeah, well, let's make it Wait, did you... Did you choose Glean, or did I? Uh, I mean, I must have, because... Well, I feel like, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I feel you. like we both made a conscious effort to... Okay, yeah, so let... Who, who should, uh, who should... I, I week? honestly could, uh, couldn't care less, so... We'll rock, paper, scissors for it after the podcast. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, oh god. What not? Um, oh god, is it Negima time?
Oh, God. Oh, my God. So, for the past, I want to say about two weeks. Probably maybe like three weeks. Two, two, three weeks. Two, three weeks. You have been infatuated <laughs> with this anime. And I would like you to, one, calmly, and two, <laughs> explain the, the general plot for this anime. There is this ten-year-old English boy from Wales, England. Yes, I have to say Wales in that voice. Um, because that's how he talks. And, um, he's training to become a wizard. Because, why the fuck not? Because anime. And, um, in order to become, like, a really good higher-tier wizard, he has to go and fucking teach school in Japan for some reason. So he teaches this all-girls middle school. Obviously. Wacky hijinks ensue. Yeah, exactly. There's an original version, there's a reboot, there was a manga. I love how there's a reboot. <laughs> the reboot, the reboot, like, um, our friend Dororo, who also watched it, me and him have had, like, actually really serious conversations about whether the original or the reboot is better. Ah. Uh... He's not the, cause, like, the original's, like, more focused on, like, uh, just the character of everything, and the reboot, um... It's either, it, it, it's, it can be one of two ways. Either it's heavily focused on action or comedy. Usually comedy. <laughs> but this anime has invaded our friend group. And <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, one of, I feel left out. I feel like I'm the our, only one not watching it. I think only, only like, uh, I don't want to say a name. Yeah, because they um, I, I feel like only one of our friends, other than <laughs> I have watched it. And he he actually finished the reboot before I did. I'm not even done with the reboot, and he's done with it. And he's reading the manga, which even I'm not gonna do. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody else has watched it. You should though. You should hop on the fucking. I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I, I think the reboot would be more. Uh, I'll, I don't like hopping on bandwagons. Too I, much, I feel like but... the reboot would be more up your alley because, like, freaking the original is more in the vein of. Um, Fruits Basket or Oran, but with less seriousness. Oh. And then the reboot is essentially like a. Uh, it like I said, it has episodes where it like goes all out on action, but it's essentially like Soul Eater. If Soul Eater was like heavily comedy centric. Yeah, like I feel like you showed me one clip from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It was a, that was from the original. And it was amazing. That's from the original. Nojika, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just Nojika's like because like my favorite. Just character. like listening to the scene, like who who would you say voices him? Oh um, what's what? I'm trying to think of his actual name. He voices um Yamazaki and Welcome to the NHK. He voices, I think it's Todd something. Yama uh Yamazaki. That's a uh... no 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 no. Wait. Yeah, Yamazaki's the nerd from NHK. And, like, the... He voices the, one of the twins in Oran. And, like, the main character of, like, Dead Man, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I... But he's... Point is, he's a very... He's a very... Known... Uh, he, he's he's one of he's one of the Funimation voice actors. He, like, yeah. One of the things I like about Negima is I recognize, like, all the voice actresses from something else. That's true. Um, I'm like, oh my god. I feel like he did something in <clears throat> SAO. Oh god, I hope not. It's... Um, yeah, though, and literally one of the things that kept me watching the series early on was his portrayal of the main character, because, like, in the third episode, which was the clip I showed you, um, I'm gonna summarize the plot of the third episode. Alright. Fucking, okay, so up to this point in the series... He went to the school. He, he's supposed to keep his wizardry a secret, by the way. And, um, he goes to the school. He fucking teaches a class. Um, and there's this... Wait, wait, wait. So in order to become a really fucking awesome wizard, he has to teach in Japan, right? Don't act like I know this. But he doesn't teach magic? He just teaches, no, like... No, no, He just teaches. He just teaches, like, fucking social studies, and they're like, <laughs> you can be a wizard now. I don't fucking know. I think that's it. But, like, yeah, up to this point in the series, um, well, he had sort of a confrontation with this one random chick who, like, is, uh, his student before she realized, um, that he was their teacher, because obviously he's fucking ten years old. 
Yeah, exactly. Essentially what happened, um, all the fucking girls were going to school, and he's, like, walking along, and he's like, oh, hello. And then she got really mad at him for some reason. And then fucking, he sneezes, which blows up her skirt, and she's like... Wait. Really? This happens, like... No, variations of the sneeze happen, like, three times in the first two episodes. Continue. Which blows up her skirt, and she's obviously really embarrassed. She's like, did you see anything? And he's like, because there's a bear on her panties. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this any less funny. Thank you for explaining! <laughs> I can't... Okay, this isn't relevant information. Should I keep going with the bear panties, or should I just yeah, skip it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I might have to watch this. <laughs> I'd say watch, like, the first three episodes of the original, and if you don't like those, just watch the reboot. We can go deeper into discussion with that later. Okay, but yeah, I want to summarize episode three. Essentially, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurry the fuck up on the context. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyways, this girl that you pissed off, um... She's a student, and then at one point, he's fucking just chilling by, like, a place outside the school, and he's looking over his book of students, and then, like, one of the students walks by, and she's carrying a bunch of books, and she trips and falls, and, like, it's, she, she's, like, there's a stairwell, and she's falling off the stairwell, like, from the side. Holy shit. Yeah, so she's gonna hit the ground and fucking die, and then he goes over, and he has to use magic to save her, and she's unconscious, but then the girl with the bear panty, she's, like... She sees him use the magic, and she's just like, What are you? I love how you went to describe her as the girl with the bear panties. Should I give you their names? <laughs> no, it's not. The girl, you just want... The well, actually, you know what? She reminds me of a character from an anime you've actually seen. Let, let, let me see if this reminds you of anything. Um, red hair, um, usually like... Fucking bitchy. Yeah, and no, 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 no. As soon as you said red hair, it's Asuka, right? Is that her name? What's her it's name? Very... Asuka from Evangelion? Yeah. Yes, but I was going for Asuna from Sword Art Online only because mm -hmm. this chick's name is Asuna. Really? And I think they're played. Okay, no, they're not played by the same person, but I think uh, Asuna's voice actor is in Negima somewhere. Ah, I'll, like I, I said, you'll recognize some of the voice actors. I, I might. I might. But, um, yeah. And then, but long story short, he doesn't have anywhere to live because he's fucking, I don't know. Oh, I love this. And he has to move in. I love this. He has to be roommates with fucking Asuna. And then, like, third episode, she has a crush on this other fucking professor at the school. Who's for, not ten. <laughs> who's decidedly not ten. <laughs> Decidedly. <laughs> he's old. In in the reboot, he has gray hair. Oh, shit. He's fucking old. Apparently it's Jump because... Hair. Apparently it's because fucking she was... No, that's that's plot stuff. I shouldn't... If anyone wants to watch that, I don't want to spoil the intricate story. Oh, The story yeah. actually... The thing with it, like, the original, like, first half is, like, super comedic. It's so like, huh, And then the second half is really depressing for no Really? Happened. Well, not really depressing, but there's... Like, there's still funny episodes, but all of a sudden, like, randomly you get a couple, like, really sad episodes, and it's like, what the fuck? Where did oh, this come fuck. from? What's the, what's the name? There was an anime that I watched, and it was like, oh, fuck, what is the name? What was the premise of it? The premise of it was, it was like, it was like this guy that, like, kidnapped a bunch of, like, hermits and stuff, and he, like, hoarded them. He, he basically did, like, a mass kidnapping. Yeah. But the thing is, he doesn't know it, because his memory's been erased. So, he has to, like, retrace his steps or something. It's it's a weird freaking anime, but it's, watch that it's really good. I don't know. Eden of the East. Eden of the East. Oh! That's what that's about? Eden of the East. Yeah. So I told me that was good. It's, it's Shit, very good. Man. You you also said his name a while back. I thought no, I said Dororo. No, you you also said his name. Shit. Um. Whatever. But, I'll fix but, it later. But no, it's really it's really good. It's like 
It's yeah, I'll like, have to watch that. It's like one of the few animes that I watched without recommendation. Because usually... Right, usually... Usually you or Dororo or fucking anyone. Yeah, most of the anime I've watched is like either by recommendation of you, Dororo, both, or someone from the internet. Yeah, but even of these, it's pretty good. Let's see, what, what if I watched without... I watched Negima without recommendation. Uh, and then, and the, you see, because you are the recommender. <laughs> exactly, I'm the recommender, and uh, Dororo and like our other friends are the recommendees. Exactly. But right. yeah, what, where, where was I talking about that? Oh yeah, he, he, he doesn't have anywhere to live, because reasons, and so he has to fucking move in with Asuna and her roommate. And fucking, like I said, Asuna has a crush on like this older professor dude. Like, the anime actually begin. Never mind, I can't spoil that joke because I don't even know how to explain it. Alright. It is disturbing. Um, well, not disturbing, it's just weird. Anyways, yeah, so, um, since he did the fucking sneezing thing, three times, twice in front of the class, um... Go on. <laughs> twice in front, no, actually, you know what, twice in front of the professor she has a crush on... Um, go, go. He he's like, how can I make it up to you? And he notices that she has a crush on this professor, so he makes a fucking love potion. And like, but he made it wrong, cause like, um, she's like, I don't want it. And he's like, but, dude, it's take. And she's like, no. And then she shoves it down his throat, and he like drinks it. And instead of him being attracted to the first person he sees, everybody who sees him is attracted to him. Oh my god. Hilarity ensues. Oh my god. There's this one girl who's literally fucking riding a horse down the hallway, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and the best part is she's voiced by uh, Maka and uh, Toru from Fruits Basket. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, there's this, there's this random shy chick who, like, hangs out in the library, and he, like, runs, and he's like, Oh, God, no! Like, his, vo <laughs> his voice cracks so much during this episode. It is amazing. And he goes into the library, like, the shy girl's like, he's like, No, they can't help me! And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she fucking, she lets him into the library, and she locks the door. And then the love potion takes effect, and, like, he actually... I can't remember how it happens, but a bookcase... Uh, a bookcase. A bookcase accidentally gets knocked over, and, um... And that's the part you shoved me. She's, she's so like, crazy. on top... She's, like, fucking on top of him. Like, the bookcase isn't quite... Re hasn't quite reached the ground, but it's, like, on top of and her. I love and she's, like... He's, like, pinned to the ground. And then all of a sudden, she's, like... Ugh. And I would like to explain. It, it is very much. He's, like... No, this isn't right. And right I'm when your teacher, and you're my student. And right when we were watching this, I would like to mention that our drummer's like eight year old brother walked in, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Johnny, do God. <laughs> and she's like, what? I'm Sorry, Maggie, but I can't help myself. And then he's like, No. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's like he's like fucking being held up by gunpoint. Like, <laughs> no! He just fucking yells at the top of and And then at the very end of the episode, I think, I think Asuna comes in and like knocks them out. But like, I think at the very end of the episode, it shows the shy girl like waking up in her room. And she's like, what happened? And like her roommate's like, oh, you were in the library with the professor. And she's just like. Oh, she puts her face in her pillow and is like, oh my god, no. <laughs> Dear god. What have I done? But yes, Negima watch both of them. Oh my god. I might have to. Yeah, I, I, you, you, you watch... Oh my god, the issue with watching only the first three is that you won't get introduced to Camo. Whew, I love, I love the next bullet point because it's just jam. Jam. <laughs> jam. Yeah, it's literally all caps. J e e e e e e e e m. Jam. Jam. A drummer. Speaking of our drummer. Speaking of, we went over to his house. This is the same time. He got, he got a, he got a new dog. We didn't yeah, talk about it. Yeah, a few, that. a few, 
Wasn't it like two or three weeks ago? I feel like it was around then, yes. Yeah, and he got a new dog, and it's a little tiny puppy golden it's retriever. Like, yeah, it's a golden retriever. And last weekend, when we, we went back. over, we, we came back, Jem, Jem, little fucking golden retriever puppy. Twice the size! I, well, well, you see, I'm not... I, I love how shocked you are, but it's like, he is twice the size as he was like two weeks ago. But really, like, I've had, like, three golden retrievers. Oh, so, yeah, so... So it's like, oh, hey, You're taller. I can, like, pet you from... And we, we had a distance. joke that he was devouring food to, like, become large enough to devour us. Yes! Like, like we, we had a joke that... I think our drummer and I had a joke that it was just, like, he had shitty metabolism, so, like, each, <laughs> just... each calorie he would, like, double in size. What did I say? I was like, I can't eat chocolate, it goes to my everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, also, I would die. <laughs> yeah, because it's a dog. Oh, my God. Oh. And, yeah, it's like, Jem was like, I will steal your soul and other things. <laughs> and other things? That woman looks pretty nice, can I? <laughs> uh, You're a dog, you don't use a wallet. I will end you. We 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 should make Jim our official uh band mascot. Can we make Jim our official podcast mascot? Yes. Yeah, because the band Actually, mascot yeah, I have a I have a picture. I have a picture of Jim. The band mascot, because the band mascot we have a giant like plush tiger in the basement oh, yes. practice, and that's oh, our yes, band of mascot. Course. And that's our band mascot. Alright, what, what else do we have? Oh, we have the uh, two singles. We so got, yeah, nice. there's two new uh, singles out recently. Well, one of them came out, I think they both came out a little while ago. The album for one of them just came out. Um, Brandon oh. Flowers and Muse. Yeah, Brandon Flowers' album just came out l- earlier this week. Ah. I listened to all of it. It's okay. It's pretty good. But yeah, um, Muse and Brandon Flowers both have new singles. Um, oh. Muse, it's called fucking Dead Inside. Dead Inside. And it's for their album Drones, which is supposed to be, like, essentially a return to their sound. Because I think we mentioned earlier in the podcast they went yeah. a little more pop slash dubstep for their last album. And I think they've stated that they're going to try going, like, more back to um, how they were before that. Like, which, the Resistance, Absolution, stuff like that. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't throw the Resistance in there. Resi- well, the single gave me more of a Resistance vibe only because it's still, like, very electro. Yeah, like, it gave that Resistance... <laughs> Honestly, I've heard, like, maybe, like, four tracks from The Resistance. The first three are my favorite, I think so. I stopped at, like, the United States Euphoria. Eurasia. Eurasia? Eurasia. Was it Eurasia? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't ever try to impersonate Unnatural, these. Unnatural Selection is really good, because, like, it's a really, it's pretty, it's a pretty rocking song. It has, like, really good bass, and then all of a sudden, like... It's seven minutes, and the reason that is is because, like, in the middle, they have a Pink Floyd-type breakdown. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, but, it's, like, probably the most rock song on there. Yeah, but really, that's my problem, is that, like, I really like, I really like, uh, I really, really like Absolution, and I also <laughs> really like, uh, Black Holes and Revelations, and those are definitely more rocking. Yeah. I but I, I, I still, I still enjoy, uh, The Resistance. Yeah. It's still pretty good. I, I, I kind of like it more than that. This, this is like what you were talking about earlier, like the Electra divide. Yeah, yeah, our divides in music. Yeah, because I'm like, whoa, this is cool. They're doing a bunch of cool, like, Electra type stuff. Because, like, probably my favorite song on the album is Undisclosed Desires, which isn't rock, like, at all. Because, uh. like, it's essentially, a, they have, like, synth bass and uh, what sounds like piano and maybe... Um, some synth and drums in there. Like, I don't think there's guitar in there. Yeah, what's a, what's a good example? A good example of just Muse... I feel like Muse has always been good at, um, making a bridge with that divide. Like, I, uh, an example I would bring is Starlight, because it's got, like, really, like... Oh, yeah. Like, fuzzy, almost synth bass, and it still has piano in it, but it's still... Very rocking. I would, I would almost make an argument for Uprising, but that's more on the electro side. Yeah, I, I remember liking Uprising. It has, it has like, it's essentially a rock song, but played electro style. Yeah, which I can, I can yeah. appreciate. Um, what, what else? 
Uh, like I said, unnatural select resistance. Yeah, let's get the into actual the, title track resistance. Let's get into uh, the actual single. The itself. new single, Dead Inside, which um, I don't know. I, th- uh, I still yeah, think like, it sounds uh, pretty electro. I I, I listened to it. And, uh, it's alright. I, I I dig it. It's I don't mind it. It's alright. I, I I don't like even. I I would rather they go. Uh, they still go for the electro sound, but the the issue. I, I like the electro sound. It's just um. The issue is the song itself, I feel, is kind of, eh. Yeah. Because, like, like, it's like, instead, most Muse songs, like, they're super grand, and it's like, wow, this is awesome. And, like, yeah, you, like, you can, like, like feel like it most, most Muse songs are, like, an experience, almost. It's like... Right, they're, like, almost orchestral things. Which, like you said, doesn't the Resistance end? The Resistance ends with something, like, labeled as a symphony, I believe. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, let me see. Um, but, um... Yeah, the new one is just sort of like... Oh, I mean, those that bass... The, the bass and drums are pretty cool. Oh, yeah. look, there's a vocal harmony. It's just like, it's happening, but you it's it's more of a passive thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it's okay. The, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next out al- The rest of the uh, album, because... Uh, their last album, Second Law, which I mentioned, had, like, the pop dubstep influence... I'm interested in hearing the rest of it, but Madness is boring as shit. Oh. Really? Like, have you heard Madness? I have not. It was fucking everywhere. Really? It was really, really popular. I, I might have then. Like, it's like, mama, 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 mad, mad, mad. Thank you. But, uh... It's okay, but it's, like, it's essentially just synth bass and drums, and it's kind of I, boring. I, I might have. Like, um, what's... The- just really, I'll, I'll play it for you after the podcast. Just really any, just really any electro, not electro. Just really any like super popular. It's usually pop, but pretty much just any popular song. Like I know exactly what it is, but I usually don't know the name. Right. Okay. Yeah. Re- the resistance ends with three songs labeled Exogenesis Symphony. Uh but yeah, um, Madness was super popular, and it was it was also like very passive, like Dead Inside, except it was more so because it was like it was really slow and there wasn't much to it. Like, ugh, the lyrics were good. The and the, re- thing, the, actual and the music thing is, was kind Muse of is Muse is good at making things really active. Right, Muse is good at like having just these. That that's why I feel like songs like uh, Madness and Dead Inside like. Coming, coming from any other band, they'd be like, oh, this is an OK song. But coming from Muse, it's almost insulting, because it's like, you've made, like, several albums full of, like, these musically interesting, just sweeping awesome songs. Oh, yeah. Like, like I think... I think... I think, <laughs> I think the best example of that is... I just discovered, like, it must have been, like, a little over a month ago... I didn't know Muse was a three piece. I figured oh, there was like I figured there was like five people and like Yeah, no, only three. It's it's crazy. It is crazy. That's I I imagine they have more members live only because of all the freaking synth and Well yeah, of course. Like they need people to operate that, but But um yeah, I feel like good examples of like how they've made musically interesting, just like big, grand, epic, sweeping songs is pretty much all of the resistance. Cause like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a song under five minutes on that album. And like <laughs> I said, on Natural Selection, and it's seven. And that's a blessing of the curse. I mean, I, I feel like for that album, it actually really works. Cause like the song. They can get a little repetitive at times, but I feel like they're able to keep them consistently interesting for, oh, like, their yeah. runtime. Like, Uprising, I didn't know it was as long as it is, because it's, like, five minutes. I thought it was, like, three minutes. Oh. It's, oh. it's, like, one of those songs where you don't notice how long it is because you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah, what's a good example of that? Uh, A Day in the Life by The Beatles, I think. Because oh. I'm like, oh, my God, that's five minutes? Because, um. like, it just... It how is. long's how long's Bohemian? It's not that long. I think it's it? also like five minutes. Oh shit! Well then, that. <laughs> let, me, let me check. Cause I have it on here. Oh, you have it on there. I have a greatest hits album. Um, otherwise, I mean, like. Fuck it. I was gonna say Hatred, but you notice how long Hatred yeah. is. 
Uh, uh, maybe a bad example, because I don't know how long it is, but Band on the Run is, like, semi-long, isn't it? I think so, yeah. It's probably, like, five, six minutes. Because it's, like, it's, like, I feel like it's longer than I think it is, because... Because right. it has all the different sections. It has all the oh, episodes. Bohemian Rhapsody is the very first track on the Greatest Hits album. It is almost six minutes. Whoa. It's, like, 5.56. What the shit? Yeah, dude. But I feel like I just watched um I just watched the US tour Wings concert um, yeah. uh last night and they played Band on the Run. Band on the Run is 5 minutes 13 seconds. Damn. Yeah, well cuz like it has all those episodes. It's a very good song. I will like right. it. Right. It's cool cuz it like transitions through a lot of sections. I like songs that do that. They keep like interesting. Yeah, like Venice Queen. Queen. Venice Venice Queen, that's a good example. It's three part like the song I told you about earlier, um I don't think it was on the podcast, but um the Chili Pepper the Red Hat Chili Peppers released like a live concert from two thousand four and there's a song that never made any of their albums it's called uh, Mini Epic and it's three different sections and like all of them are really unique and different. Well, cause like um um my girlfriend, bless her. I, I know way more now. The, like, most most pieces that are constructed in, like, three parts, it starts out with, like, a slow movement, and then, like, a fast movement, and then, like, a almost kind of a medium movement to end. I think that's what it is. Mm. The point is that one of them's slow, one of them's fast, and one of them's at a moderate thing. Mm. And I feel like Venice Queen illustrates that. Because yes, definitely, like, three distinct parts, and, like, the last one is the fastest. And I guess you could also say that with, uh, Band on the Run. Yeah. Oh, uh, this isn't... There's another song. I don't know if you've heard it. I don't think you have, but, um... There's a song divided into, like, tons of different parts. Uh, The Greatest Man That Ever Lived. Oh. It's Weezer. You might Red have album. told me. I, I don't think I've shown it to you. Mike has heard it. But, um, it's... Basically, he just... He's trying... Uh, what happens is it's like divided into different sections that I are mean, designed to sound like different bands i mean like freaking um on fly by night oh on fly by night there's a song that does that yeah uh by toy and the snow dog there is like well, well this oh, is they label each like distinct section of it this is also mind you rush <laughs> Rush had twenty one twelve for that. Oh yeah, like twenty one, just twenty one. Twenty one twelve, I believe, has like five tracks on it, but it's still like an hour and a half long. Yeah, because twenty one twelve is like five parts in and of itself. Yeah, it's it's. Crazy. Oh, I think Radio had like ha- Radio had had like a Paranoid Android. Oh yeah, that's pretty long. Yeah. Uh, let's and that's move also on. A distinct let's sections. move to the Brandon Flowers. Uh, yeah, so new Muse single. It's alright, but the rest of the album should be better. Yeah. I hope. Uh, New Brandon Flowers single. Oh my god, this is what I wanted from the killers really? of Battleborn. Oh, for Battleborn, yes, I can see Yeah, that. like, I don't want this from the killers, like, I feel like the killers should definitely have more rock to them. But if you're gonna, if, if they're gonna go in a more pop direction, this is how I want it to sound. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Can't Deny My Love. Like, oh um, my god, Brandon. Like, uh... Honestly, like I said, once again, with the divide, which I feel like this is even more divided, because I feel like the Killers is pop rock and electro, in some sense. They, they got more electros they went on. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't have much exposure to the Killers. I love me the fuck out of some Samstown, but otherwise... Yeah, yeah their first two albums are their best. Day and, A- Day and Age is good. It's not great, it's good. I like it. Yeah, but really, like, listening to it, uh, my first reaction was like, I, I really don't know what to think of this, because it's like... I sort of got, I sort of, when, it, when I first listened to The Resistance, it sort of gave me that vibe, but better. Yeah. I was like, this is like Day and Age, if Day and Age were, like, more orchestral and, like, experimental. Yeah, like, um... Because Day and Age is, like, straight pop. Yeah, I don't know. I can't can't deny my love is like, like when I when when I listen to it, I'm like, this is this is a killer song. You can just tell, and maybe that's just from Brandon Flowers singing because it's very. I feel like it's a distinct vibe, but there's definitely some killers in there. 
Oh, yeah. But, um... Yeah. I mean, it's not... I feel like it's not, like, Sam's Town quality. Like, I really right. enjoy this, but... I feel like it's almost day and age quality. Like, day and age at its best. I personally haven't listened to it, so... Yeah. Okay. Day, day and age is pretty solid. Like, it's... A lot of it's more on the electro side, though, so I don't know if you'd be into it, but... Yeah, I don't know. I just to... Human and Dustland Fairy Tale are both like that. There are several other songs I can mention. Yeah, I don't know. I think just from the both of them, I just think they're alright. They're not... They're not super interesting. Yeah, I, I... Like, I used to praise Hot Fuss a lot, but I feel like overall the Killers are more of a songs band, except for Sam's Town. Yeah, but that doesn't no, that's just that doesn't exactly that's not exactly a bad thing. No, no like, actually I would consider the Foos a songs band. But both the killers and the Foos it sort of depends on the album cuz like Sam's Town no, and, Sam's Town and Day and Age I both think are solid albums, but like Hot Fuss, Sawdust and Battleborn I feel like I more I usually just pick individual songs from those. And then Foo Fighters um I'll take Wasting Light or um, Color oh, in the Shape, Sonic Highways, any day. That's true. But, like, Echoes, um, I haven't listened to In Your Honor enough to know. But, I, like, Echo- I haven't even listened to it. Shit, I should do so, that. Somebody, somebody essentially summed it up for me. They said, like, in the 90s, the Foo Fighters had, like, sort of more of an identity, and then as the 2000s went on, they became sort of a little more boring in the albums department. Yeah, um... It's, like, less experimental, more just, like, here's rock. Well, yeah, like, because the thing is, um... The one thing I have heard from In Your Honor, which I really like, because I heard, uh... I listened to Skin and Bones as Razor. Oh, yeah. That's a damn good song. I haven't I'm, I'm, I'm listened to uh, In Your Honor enough to listen to Razor a bunch. Well, I, think it's, I think it's a very last song. I'm trying to think of songs from uh, In Your Honor that aren't on the greatest hits that I like. Because Best of You is on the greatest hits. Yeah. Uh, DOA is awesome. I heard. I knew it from Rock Band. Friend of a Friend is really good. I, I, I think, think that's also on Skin and Bones. I think that song is about Kurt, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I read somewhere it's about Kurt and the lyrics line up with that. <sighs> Let's not even get into it. Yeah, because uh... people, people will say like half the Foo Fighters discography is about Kurt when really like only, like, a song or two here and there are. Yeah, exactly. Um, he dedicated these days to Kurt and Chris once. That's cool. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Dave Grohl was cute. So cute. <laughs> if, if I called Dave Grohl cute, he'd be like, yeah, motherfucking cute, bitch! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! What up? What up? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, can't deny my love... I feel like I listened to the whole album. It's um, it's not as good as Hot Fuss or Samstown, obviously, and no. then it's not even quite as good as Dan Age. But it's a big step up from Battleborn, and like, oh yeah, is that the most recent? Yes. Oh god, that's they good. they Brandon Flowers said in an interview recently that he said like, Battleborn wasn't the best we can do, and we all know it. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. I needed to hear that. <laughs> yeah. I really needed to hear that, because, like, I, I, like, the killer songs I like, I really like, but, like, when they're bad, I'm just like, oh, my God, because I get really sad. Oh, yeah, But, true. no, if they freaking, if they m- make another album and it sounds like Can't Deny My Love or, like, any songs from Brandon's solo album, I'll act, I won't be like, oh, my God, they're back. I'll just be like, oh, they're making yeah. music I like again. They're making a comeback. Yeah, because Battleborn, I'll take a song from it, like, here or there, or, like, yeah. occasionally, but for the most part, I'm not super into it. Like, even the songs I like from it, I think, are kind of cheesy. Yeah. Freaking Runaway is here with me. Oh, it's like, yeah. I like those it's occasionally, a, a but they're kind of, they're really generic. Yeah, it's a lot of slower movements. Yeah, and Brandon's uh, solo album, it's like... It's very, it, it sounds like, it, it, it sounds straight out of the 80s. Really? Yeah, it sounds like an 80s pop album, but like, it never, even the ballads, it never feels like too slow or generic. It's like, mo- most of the album keeps a good tempo, it keeps you like, engaged. It's not like Battleborn where it's like, 
this song is slow. It's gonna be all epic and stuff. And it's like, nah, I'm not feeling it. it it's like, like it, it, it pulled a slow motion daydream. Yeah, it's like, except Battleborn, I think, even more, because yeah. all the songs are supposed to be, like, big anthematic, like, yeah! But it's like, yeah. eh, I mean, maybe if I see it live, it would be good. Yeah, it's like... On an album, it doesn't <laughs> translate terribly well. Alright, what's the next song? Oh, it's, uh, ballad number three. It's... It, we're on track number two, though. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, most of, like, whereas Battleborn is, like, all right, everybody, we're going to have some slow jams and some fist-pumping freaking, yeah. like, slow like slow jams. Brandon's solo album is like, we're just going to yeah. fucking, let's have a good time. Let's play some fucking music, Pete. Yeah, it's like, this isn't going to be terribly rocking, but let's have a fucking good time with 80s pop. And it's like, oh, this is actually fun. And there's only one song that's really cheesy on it, <laughs> which is because it's, it, it's like, it sounds like the cheesier type of 80s pop, like... It, it's a Bon Jovi or, like, a Loverboy type song. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. And, like, most people don't like it, but I have... It, I'm like, eh, I used to listen to a lot of Bon Jovi, and this yeah. is far from the cheesiest stuff he's done. Oh, maybe. It's, maybe it's just, too. like... You know the song, uh, Working for the Weekend? Maybe. It's sort of like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, like, uh, freaking digging up the heart. Uh, it's good. I like it. I think oh, I'm pretty solid. Check I think out. I think we're done, man. We're yeah. we're like at almost an uh, we're like at almost two hours. Are we? Yeah. Holy, holy, great fucking googly moogly. Yeah, man. I mean, and this isn't even on my laptop. <laughs> oh god, we, the editing is gonna be hell. Oh, it's gonna be horrendous. I guarantee it. So, um, when we refer to this week in the podcast, know that this is probably coming out, like, a year afterwards. <laughs> a year. <laughs> well, not a year. That's an exaggeration, but, like, probably it's gonna take a few weeks. Yeah, a week. A week. Well, not a week. I'll or give two. you, I'll give you two or three. Yeah, I'll go I, I'd say it'll take, like, a decent portion of next weekend for me to, like, process it. Because yeah. I'll have to edit it, and then... Probably the file in Audacity is going to take, like, a long time to export, so I'll just do it right before I go to bed and leave the computer. And, and then I'll have to do that with Movie Maker and then YouTube, so it'll probably just take all of next weekend to do. Behind the scenes and discussion scenes. time. Yeah. Freaking behind the scenes on discussion time would be boring as shit. Oh. <laughs> just be like, okay, I'm going to chop out that portion of audio. Well, well, that would be with any podcast, would it not? That's true. All right. That was loud.